said that I want an official Red Rider carbine action 200 shot range model air rifle in a movie with legs and feet. And I think I found the perfect one. Happy Halloween! What to watch? That is the question. Now sure, you can go and watch the 17th installment of Halloween and have the same conversation afterwards that you always do. Damn, I thought they had them. But I wanted to talk about an older film from dusk till dawn. A 1996 horror action film that has vampires, feet, guys who like feet, and a lot of imagination. Now at this point in the script, I haven't actually seen the film in years. So I think it still holds up as a goofy, badass horror type movie, but I could be incredibly wrong. Although if you haven't seen it, I still just want to tell you to watch it, or at least watch the review. Just off the dome, I remember uh, Salma Hayek's fine self dancing with a snake. Danny Trejo's in it. I think he plays an asshole. Cheech Marin yells about the different types of pussy that the bar offers, the bar he works at, for like a minute straight. That's also not me being crude. I'm like 200% positive that he just starts emceeing about various types of punani. The movie's a little out there. Let's watch it. Hey, by the way, I also have some live commentary throughout the movie, so I hope you enjoy that and well. And yes, we are paying bills. Thank you. I want a VPN to hide my IP I need a VPN but when the time's right I want a VPN to keep me stress free I need a VPN but when the time's right I want Nord VPN, bad actors bitter I want hackers only fishing in a river I need Nord VPN to safely surf sites I need Nord VPN but when the time's right Time's right now, inbox filled with a fake bank notice Apparently Amazon charged me two G's YouTube about to take down my whole channel Double check, never click on a sketch link Stream libraries from any country Up to six devices, you can get it working Everything, everywhere, all at once You can watch that on Netflix, Turkey Get to your plan at a huge discount Plus four months free if you go and click now Just go to NordVPN.com Slash Mr. GG or you can click the link below, that's nordvpn.com slash mrgg, and thank you, Nord, for sponsoring this video. Seth and Richie, two criminals on the run trying to keep a low profile. Yeah, we got two men in their 30s, one has glasses, and the other one has a tribal tattoo on his neck. Yeah, they're also wearing matching suits in the middle of Texas. Sit down and shut up, rookie. Now, I didn't know this, but this movie's considered to be George Clooney's breakthrough role. Like, he had work before this, but this is supposedly his first, like, step into big Hollywood. Could've fooled me. But I guess it makes sense because he plays an alcoholic asshole who uses multiple slurs throughout the film. Doubt he was doing a lot of that on Roseanne. It's the 90s. It's fine. Quentin Tarantino had already begun to circle the block by this point. Successfully, might I add. You know, Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction. That's just two. Also, fun fact, Clooney is older than Tarantino. Not by much, but I would have bet against the spread. Also, if any of you happen to need some it's not too late motivation, Clooney's breakthrough role came to fruition when he was 35. He was in Ocean's Eleven when he was 40. And that would have been like the earliest Clooney movie I would have thought of. You don't want to stretch the other one, boss. So a ranger shows up to a gas station. Everything's cool. Two buckos shooting the shit. Everything they're saying in this 1996 movie is very normal, respectful, politically correct. Hey, leaning over blue chip. Got sort of sick. So you got that goddamn <laughs> boy who's working the grill. I mean, that fucking idiot doesn't know What are you saying? <laughs> Isn't there a law or something against <laughs> serving food oh. in public? Oh. 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 Mm. Things ought to be. Oh, are they just picking on a kid with a disability for like the first five minutes of this fucking movie? Yeah, except for the part where they dogpile an intellectually disabled kid for like two minutes straight. It's like the majority of the conversation. <laughs> anyway, as the ranger breaks to drain his lizard, his words not mine, I'm just as disgusted, it is revealed that the criminal brothers are hiding, and I do use that term loosely, in the store with two hostages. Richie accuses the clerk of signaling the ranger that they were here, and he vehemently denies it. Out of the two, Seth is the badass who has one-liners and references up the wazoo. Richie's kind of like his dog. They're brothers, but Richie's definitely the baby brother, who's also a sex offender and murderer. 
It is so bad. The ranger comes back and then Richie says, yeah, I just want to get to the title card already. So he blows his ableist brain all over the counter for no real reason. Nothing happened, but Richie tells Seth that the clerk mouthed the words, help us to the ranger, which once again, the clerk says, no, you're fucking lying. <laughs> Stop gaslighting me. Richie's clearly a loose goose, but he's also really sensitive. Seth thinks he's a fucking idiot, but he loves him, I guess. The clerk is neither, but he does have a gun. Richie takes a slug right through the center of his hand, but Richie fucking sucks in this movie, so that's okay. Oh, I should also add that just like a round of haha tequila, the brothers are the worst fucking shots. Clooney lets a clip go a yardstick away from the clerk and craps out. So what do you do when you can't aim? You just start a fire. What a fucking toss. The Kareem of arson. But even with that, the clerk's going out in a blaze of glory. The brothers, in retaliation, have the ingenious idea to shoot the ceiling to allow more oxygen to come into the building to feed the fire. Or they just couldn't shoot dice in a casino. The clerk falls over because fire bad. Popcorn starts popping and Seth scolds Richie on the way out. Low profile, let's get the meaning of the word. Profile. And that is the intro to our movie today. I spent a little extra time on it because I think it perfectly sets the tone for the movie. We'll pick up the pace from here. It only gets better. Also, I do want to give a nod to the song that the movie starts and ends with, Dark Knight by The Blasters. The intro fits perfectly. I get excited to watch the rest of the movie with this song. Seth drinks painkiller cocktails. Richie has a hole in his hand. Surprised he didn't fucking pour Jack over his wound. Oh. <laughs> And there's also a bank teller tied up in their trunk. She could use some savings. <laughs> Stop it. The next chunk consists of Clooney saying cool guy lines to the hostage and Richie being creepy, asking her to come lay next to him while he watches TV. These guys are not s firecracker salesmen from Tijuana. They don't even know the meaning of the word. George, you, you made a tequila. You can't so be talking like that. Oh, and we can't forget God's delicacy known as the home to plantar fasciitis. Does Quentin just play himself in this movie? You know, I'm cool with feet. But even watching this movie, I'm like, yo, chill. <laughs> we are then introduced to this cute little religious family, ex-minister Jacob and two kids, Kate and Scott. Their mom's dead. Seth comes back, Seth's <laughs> horrible. Seth comes back with food and drinks and the hostage is nowhere to be seen. I'm sure she's fine though. You left her with your perfectly reasonable brother who has never derailed any of your plans. I actually really like Clooney in this movie. He's just taken aback here as he looks to this poor woman who was brutally murdered and raped. Richie claims she flipped a switch when she left and tried escaping, so he did what he had to do. For whatever reason, Grape was involved in, in that order of assignments. This is not me. I am a professional fucking thief. What is this guy's problem? Poor dear. Laying low, huh, Seth? Trying not to draw attention, huh, Seth? Professional fucking thief, huh, Seth? <laughs> the family ends up at the same hotel, and with the police hunt only growing for the brothers, they hatch up a plan. Hold the family hostage and force them to sneak them across the border so they can meet up with their criminal brethren and avoid American authorities. Let's go. Let's move the d over here, too. Let's go. <laughs> Listen, I don't, I don't support any of, any of this stuff, guys. I, I, just like, I just like the movie. <laughs> so what's the story with you two? You couple of f <laughs> Calm down, Clooney! Here's a clip that you'll quote for the next five years. Richie, would you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me, please? Sure. I legitimately never picked up on this during my old watches. This just goes to show you how young I was the times I watched this movie. Richie hears things and sees things that are not happening. I'm not gonna label what it is because the movie doesn't anyway, but at the very least, in a criminal duo, he's a liability. Seth describes this to be a civil transaction. Just take us into Mexico and spend the night with us until my compadres pull up in the morning, then you fuck off, alive. There's some fun little dialogue here, and then you're quickly reminded that Tarantino wrote the screenplay. So the plan is simple. Hide in the bathroom with a daughter at gunpoint and just try and cruise on through. But Richie, the epitome of a team player, got his feelings hurt after Seth warns him not to be a nut. And now he won't shut the hell up. Well, what do you mean, nut? It's a close call, but with some last second audibles, they make it through. And I love the following celebration from Seth. Baby, we did it. We're in Mexico. We're fucking in Mexico, you little piece of fucking shit. They pull up to a bar that Seth's criminal buddy recommended him. The infamous 
Titty Twister. A strip bar with the roughest, toughest sons of bitches you've ever seen. It's like the Salty Spittoon. With like a lot of titties. Listen, kid. I think you'd be more comfortable over at that place. Titty Twister. Juniors. And just in case you didn't believe me on the whole pussy selection TED talk, uh, enjoy. Come on in, pussy lovers! Here at the Titty Twister, we're slashing pussy in half. Give us an offer on our best selection of pussy. This is a pussy blowout. <laughs> I love Cheech. He plays three characters in this movie. He plays the Border Patrol officer, this coochie salesman, and he plays another character that we haven't seen yet. We got hot pussy, cold pussy, we got wet pussy, we got... Smelly Cheech actually tries to hold off Seth from entering, but this is George fucking Clooney. So he breaks his hand and gives him the Jake Paul truffle shuffle. Now is my shit together, is my shit together. There we go. Like a thief in the night, Seth. Then Richie, being a prick, not the cool one, just tiptoes back to kick him in the ribs a few times. So yeah, anyways, rough and tough bar with broads, beer, and canitas. So we gotta be careful on the B-roll in this scene because... Uh, there's a lot of breast playing Where's Waldo in the shot. But this is my favorite scene in the movie. And of course it has Danny Trey on it, come on. I unfortunately can't show the whole scene. and It'll get claimed. I'm already kind of toeing the line. Not on fair use, but just enough to get claimed. Regardless, let me fanboy about it for a bit and I'll show you bits and pieces. So Seth walks in and he fucking loves it. Degeneracy at its finest. There's guys beating the piss out of each other and Clooney's giddy. Seth walks up to the bar, whiskey. And Trejo does the dopest shit. You can't come in here. What do you mean? It's a private bar. You're not welcome. You told me that I'm not good enough to drink here? Seth is not one to back down, and the rebuttal is hilarious. This shithole doesn't want my money? Trail tells him this bar is for bikers and truckers only. Get out. The muscle steps in, and Seth continues to Seth. I'm gonna count to three. I'm gonna count to three. One, two. Jacob steps in and tells him you got it all wrong. You said this bar is for truckers and bikers? Llama well, truck driver. And what makes this scene perfect is the soundtrack. The bar's band is playing a banger ruski. Angry Cockroaches by Tito and Tarantula, who, by the way, are the actual band playing in the movie. Love it. If you look outside your door in your parking lot, you'll see a big recreational vehicle. That's mine. This bar is for truck drivers. I am a truck driver. And just like that, welcome to the Titty Twister. Bottle of whiskey, five glasses. Didn't miss a fucking beat. Come on, Clooney. Like a thief in the night. <laughs> Part of me actually thought I was going to have a serving of humble pie rewatching this movie because I thought it was just going to be a lot of nostalgia, but it's still fucking sick. We slowly start to get vaguely introduced to some of the other characters in the bar. My favorite being Sex Machine. No, that isn't short for anything. Like Henry. That's his name. Not again, Tom. And if you recognize him, that is Tom Savini, legendary special effects artist. His resume speaks for itself. But who gives a fuck about that? He's got a makeshift pistol on his dick. It's got dual chambers. Like little nuts. Fucking nuts. How do you shoot it? With the right thrust? You know what, actually, let's talk about the safety of you having a loaded turret with questionable specifications on your lap when surrounded by strippers. Then we got Frost, who's just trying to stack dominoes, but you got all these clumsy whores stomping around. No, 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 no. These women are lovely. And uh, speaking of lovely women, Selma Hayek has a dedicated scene to her, rightfully so, performing on stage with another beautiful tune by Tito and Tarantula titled After Dark. So I'm pretty sure I read somewhere, I don't know how much validity there is to this story, that Selma Hayek had a pretty strong phobia of snakes, but apparently she was, I'm using these words loosely, hypnotized? in a trance of sorts, kind of the way everybody is in the audience right now. <laughs> and that was the only way she was able to record this scene with the snake. I guess Madonna was willing to do this role. And once she heard that, she was like, oh, well, Madonna's gonna take it. Well, let me do this, I got this. Oh yeah, straight to the, to the most attractive man in the building, huh? Or wait, oh no, uh, yeah, no, Quentin just wrote this screenplay. <laughs> it's iconic. And Salma is just so... God damn it, Tarantino! Why can't you just like brunettes or green eyes, you freak? I would be lying if I told you that I wouldn't sacrifice my sense of smell. 
to be him in 1996. Anyway, as everybody de-chubs, <laughs> Cheech is back in the house and he's not too happy about what happened earlier. Danny re-stabs the gap in Richie's hand, which probably just pinned him down if anything. Seth pops big man, Richie stabs Trejo, and Cheech gets a whole clip in his chest. But Richie, that hand's a little too bloody for this bar. No. Selma, Selma, what did they do to you, Selma? I still would. Oh. Selma's gunned down, but not before she takes a chunk out of Richie. We're perfectly fine with this. Yeah, maybe you shouldn't have shot Cheech eight fucking times, Seth. Any excuse to have Selma on top of you one more time, huh? Unfortunately, it is time for the titty twister to reveal its true intentions, and all hell proceeds to break loose. Looking at it now, I love Tom Savini's shock face. It is incredible, and it is in so many scenes. We get a lot of fun kills with Sex Machine, Frost, even Kate uses the cross to take out Cheech, and this looks incredible. 1996, I love this shit. This is just good old fashioned tomfoolery. Frost fucking palms this guy's heart out of his chest like he's stripping a fumble. I'm not gonna drain you completely. I would doubt that, Salma. That <laughs> also, look at this fucking thing. You kidding me? This was on set? And nobody shot it on accident? Crazy. Sex Machine then decides he's sick of the soundtrack. Now let's kill that fucking band. But they don't give him the satisfaction. They just fucking kamikaze off stage. There's no way in hell you guys just mobbed off a fucking horde of advanced muscular vampires and you can't break a piece of wood that is barricading the door. Now there is one forgotten foe. Everyone turns when they die and Richie is still stuck here daydreaming about bunions. He goes full Frankenstein mode and Seth takes lead. A steak through the chest and a shot of whiskey is all he needs. There are like three or four, that's fair. Bats, there are bats outside. I've had a bat inside. Not fun. All those bats are vampires, so there's a cause for concern. Even more cause for concern, these dead bikers are still turning, so they need to go around and make sure everyone's dead dead. Sex machine gets bit. I'm mad. Couldn't they have just killed Richie a third time? They have a powwow and decide that crosses will hold off the vampires. Jacob has his faith tested by Seth. Pow! And Frost starts to recount a war story. Single hand. George is bored. Yeah. While Sex Machine starts to hear voices and starts to grow fangs. Yeah, maybe it's time to wrap it up, Frost. Hell has rebroken loose, and Sex Machine is a fucking tank. Bites Frost, elbows Seth, bites Jacob, hip tosses Seth, fucking catapults Jacob to certain death. Kit gets a powered up smash attack. Scott's punk ass catches a stray for the meme, but Frost wants to smoke. He manages to lob him, but straight into a window. Bats flood the bar, and the group makes it to a back room. So now we just have the legend that is Seth, a liability and this kid who plays Apex. But Jacob's still alive, somehow. And he hasn't even been spotted, somehow. I guess all those flying bats with echolocation apparently missed the guy just on the floor. He finds a cute little bat, <laughs> a shotgun, and EGAD, offense and defense. Yeah, that'll hold him off. Oh, that might work a bit better. Oh! Blast. This looks fucking great, man. Look at this. 96? That shit is terrifying. That must have been the coolest fucking set to be on. Holy shit. Jacob regroups in the back and they scavenge all the stolen goods from past truckers to create some fun little weapons. Let's walk through them in order from best to worst. I think Jacob's initial blueprint still wins even after everyone else's montage. His shotgun cross isn't the most flashy, but it's easily the most effective. He basically can't be touched and he can one tap any of these dirt bags. Next is Scott. He has a super soaker, which of course he does. And it's not like it's filled with kerosene or pepper spray. It's filled with water that is then blessed by Jacob to buff it into holy water. He also strapped on some holy water balloons as a secondary. Now you'll see his weapon actually mows him down. Two pumps and they just incinerate. You can basically just shoot it in the air like a sprinkler system and it's GG's. But this is why I ranked him second. This little piece of shit super soaker holds a whopping 12 ounces of water. And once that's done, you got nothing, kid. Balloons? Think of your last water balloon fight. Think of all those times you missed a throw. Think of all those times you didn't miss a throw, but then it just bounced off and fell on the floor. Trash. <laughs> Kate's next. She finds a crossbow, no adjustments needed. It's cool enough, but this thing isn't holding off a horde. You're better off playing sniper. Where's the strategy, guys? One arrow at a time, who knows the capacity, and going off the movie thus far, an arrow that doesn't hit head or heart isn't even an insta-kill. Boo. And yes, unfortunately, Seth has the worst weapon. Seth, I get it looks cool, but out in the field, 
you die first. He carves out a steak and throws it in this mechanism that I'm not even gonna bother to try and jokingly name because some asshole in the trades will comment and say, oh, you didn't know that's a steel PowerPoint drill? I learned that when I was six. Anyway. <laughs> useless. To kill one vampire, he has to get within striking distance and raw dog them for like 2-3 seconds. That's death. Seth, you're exposed. The stake itself would have been debatably better. I'm disappointed, Seth. This is some dumb shit Richie would have made. Anyway, the war has begun and Sex Machine isn't done with them. But Seth takes care of that with the swiftness. Let's just hope he isn't the vampire variant that turns into a massive mutant rat. <laughs> The odds! Kate pieces them up quick with her only useful perk of accuracy, but Frost has some words for the crew as well. Jacob says, Be gone, sinner! Frost is atheist, sorry champ. Oh, well, alright, well, what if I just go inside of you? Huh? What if I just start shooting inside of you, Frost? What if I just start cocking inside of you, Frost? Huh? You like that shit, Frost? It's pretty cool when you don't say it out loud. Jacob approaches a couple of hoodlums, but then they leave him alone. Old man Jacob has finally turned. Scott's soft because he lets his dad bite him because he loves him or whatever. But with one holy water balloon and a pistol, Scott calls game. This is the coolest shit Scott does in the whole movie, by the way. But come on, we can't have Scott in the ending. He gets swarmed like everybody should have been by now and begs Kate to finish him off. Hey yo! She pops him and luckily he swallowed all that TNT earlier or else this would have done dick all. Surrounded, Seth and Kate worry about their scarcity of ammo. But as they approach daylight, lights start to seep through and burn the vampires. Seth then urges Kate to use her last bullets to shoot more holes in the walls. And a more comforting voice couldn't bellow from the outside at a time like this. Cheech is outside, but like the third Cheech, he's the criminal buddy we've been talking about. Seth tells him to kick in the door and they just start blasting. Daylight pours in, hits the disco ball, causing explosion after explosion after explosion. It's chaotic. It's stupid. I love it. It's a rowdy place. It's on the middle of nowhere. There'll be no cops. And it's open from dusk to dawn. Hey, didn't you say you want to meet in the morning? He we said are. it! Well, the desert silence is so peaceful at this point, and there's still some funny dialogue to cap everything off. That girl's entire fucking family is dead. What were they, psychos? Or? They look like psychos. They piece up their criminal deal. Kate asks Seth if he needs company, but he denies her. Throws her a couple grand and drives off. What an asshole. <laughs> Dark Knight by the blasters revs back up, and we zoom out to see the titty twister was actually on top of a temple surrounded by destruction and carcasses. The end. They ended up making a part two and part three to this, which I've never seen. Home releases. The only person I recognize from the two being Danny Trejo. And they also came out with a TV series as well. I don't know, maybe something fun for a future watch. But for now, that's just a little look into some old horror that I fancy. Thank you for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my beautiful, lovely patrons for always supporting the boy. Buy the merch in viz.tv slash chapter one. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi and I am out. Happy Halloween. Oh. <laughs>